We call this segment simply Capital Spotlight. We essentially shine the spotlight on a member of our General Assembly to discuss some of the things they've been working on. We invite members of both the House and Senate here before session to discuss uh, some of these matters and how it might affect you, the Rhode Island citizen. And it gives me a great deal of pleasure, maybe selfishly, because he represents the community in which I live, the Honorable State Representative Ray Johnson. Representative, it's great to see you. It's great to be here, Dave. And how are things in our community of Pawtucket? Things are always as good as usual. Well, listen, I'll tell you what, it's particularly good that we have you here today because you're in law enforcement with the Pawtucket Police Department. You've been in law enforcement for some time. It's something that you don't, it's, it's, it's something that you do know quite a bit about. And you've been working on some legislation that involves law enforcement. One piece of legislation named after uh, an Illinois sexual abuse victim by the name of Aaron, and it's appropriately called Aaron's Law. You've uh, proposed this here in Rhode Island. Tell our viewers about it. Yes, it uh, basically requires the Department of Education on the elementary and secondary uh, level to add um, a sexual awareness program to their existing health care uh, program that's already currently in place. Uh, basically, um, teaching children uh, how to respond and how to let uh, teachers and so forth, parents and so forth, know when uh, they've been victimized by either a child molester or a child abuser or something along that lines. Uh, it's been my experience in law enforcement that um, sometimes children, or, or, or most of the time children, are actually threatened into not disclosing this type of abuse, uh, a threat against their family, against the uh, family members, something to that effect. So for quite some time, a lot of them will keep this abuse to themselves and not forward it to anyone. This, uh, this adds to the existing health care um, curriculum that would actually teach uh, the children that it's all right to uh, disclose this type of information to uh, parents. In, in, in eight states, I guess, already in the United States have enacted similar legislation. Uh, have you gotten feedback from any of those states? Uh, not yet. I haven't. Uh, I think it's five states that actually enacted it in, um, with an additional, it might be about seven or eight additional states that are trying to enact it, including Rhode Island this year. Uh, as you know, this bill is uh, co-sponsored by Senator Jamie Doyle on the Senate side, so we're hoping that it, uh, it gets a speedy, um, you know, a speedy hearing over on their side and we can get this accomplished uh, working with the Board of Education. You, you know, it, it, it's so important because so often you hear people well into their adulthood talk about the abuse that took place when they were young children and either they were afraid to come forward, they didn't know how to come forward, or in some cases, their parents didn't believe them. Mm -hmm. And um, this is adding another element, an alternative, to make uh, both educators and children more aware that they have something they can do. That's correct, Dave. Now, also, you have another piece of legislation called the Kelsey Smith Act. This involves, um, it was named after uh, a Kansas girl who had been kidnapped and murdered. And this again involves law enforcement and technology. Tell our audience about that. <clears throat> yes, it's uh, the Kelsey Smith Act is in fact uh, mirrored after an act that was um, introduced and, and signed into law in the state of Kansas. Uh, it involved Kelsey Smith, uh, who was 17 at the time. I believe it was June of 2007. Uh, she was shopping at a local uh, mall, a Target store, and when she left, she was followed by a, <clears throat> by a, a, a man um, who ended up abducting her. Um, I guess friends and family realized that there was something wrong when uh, she wasn't answering her phone. So uh, they made a trip to the, uh, the mall parking lot where they did find her vehicle. Uh, they immediately sensed that there's something wrong, uh, contacted law enforcement. Law enforcement, knowing that she carried a cell phone, uh, tried to have uh, one of the, the telecom carriers ping, uh, which is a, a, a device they used to locate uh, a cell phone. Yeah, and off the, the off the nearest tower. That's correct, off of, off one of the towers. It's 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 a uh, technology that was you know um, back then, and it's also as you know uh, in effect now, and it assists um, law enforcement in the location if a uh, you know if a victim if a, a person falls victim to um, something that's in a, a dangerous situation, life or death, uh, or maybe aids in the, the uh, recovery of a missing person. The, the problem is getting access to that ping and to get access to that information from the cell phone uh, carrier. That's correct. Um, the cell phone providers would, uh, they, when, they, when they registered to do business in the state of Rhode Island, uh, 
they would, would also list all their emergency contacts and so forth. So in the event that law enforcement needed to do this, and it's only a, it's, it's only a certain you know, uh, area that they would do it. They just wouldn't um, throw it out there for the sake of, uh, of finding somebody that was wanted on a, on a warrant or anything like that. This is just victims. Um, <clears throat> and they would give, it would, it would be stored in E911, the emergency uh, place there, and, um, and available to law enforcement. Right now, the telecom companies, for the most part, um, you know, may provide that. I, this would I, require. I, if, if, if you would have had, or law enforcement in Kansas had had access to something like this, this young girl's life could have been possibly saved. It, it could have been. That, that probably will never be known, but uh, in the event of that case, um, the cell phone tower actually picked up a, a ping from her phone within an hour of when she went missing. Um, and as a result, you know, it stores that. And when finally, three and a half days later, law enforcement ended up getting um, the, the telecom carrier to, carrier to release that, uh, that call location information, they found her uh, deceased within 45 minutes. Oh, my goodness. You, you know, uh, Rep, uh, as a law enforcement person, you're a, you're a great face to be a part of this legislation. And I, I want you to give uh, Mayor Grebian of Pawtucket props, as well as your chief, yes. because there's not a day when I drive through Pawtucket where I do not see the visibility of the Pawtucket Police Department and as a former criminal justice major in college I know how important that is to fighting crime and your department does a fabulous job. I will pass that along and you're right it is a fine organization and I'm proud to be a member of it. Thank you so, so much Representative. Thank you. And thanks to you too. My name is Dave Barber and you're watching Capital Spotlight.